volunteers during our regular educational courses. We will suggest pausing the video when complex diagrams are presented. This will give you extra time to read the labels. Please supplement this video by reading standard textbooks. The ultrasound guided infraclavicular block is the emperor nerve block for all arm surgeries distal to the shoulder joint. In comparative studies, the infraclavicular block surpasses both the supraclavicular and axillary blocks for speed of onset and completeness. The infraclavicular block also exceeds the supraclavicular block for safety by having no potential for phrenic nerve block and by having a zero risk of pneumothorax in trained hands. This nerve block is performed at the level of the cords of the brachial plexus. The plexus at this point is maximally bunched together, but unlike the plexus at other points, the infraclavicular plexus lies within a capacious compartment with virtually no functional fascial or tissue barriers between the nerve components. This compartment, thus similar to the popliteal fossa, is forgiving, meaning millimeter scale precision needle placement is not needed to achieve success. Secondly, drugs injected onto any cord spreads readily to reach each other cord of the plexus. Lastly, there is little risk of drug being wasted by inadvertent injection into adjacent muscle compartments. The infraclavicular space lies chordate to the clavicle and lateral to the chest. On this horizontal section through the infraclavicular space, see the brachial plexus lying in proximity to the artery. With ultrasound guidance, the subclavian artery is the primary easily identified visual target for the infraclavicular block. The brachial plexus line runs through the C5 nerve root in the neck in a straight line under the midpoint of the clavicle to the inner aspect of the proximal upper arm. A needle inserted towards posterior at any point along this line can make contact with a nerve. Keep this image in mind when performing the infraclavicular block. The nerve block needle must be inserted from the clavicle towards chordate in a parasagittal plane. To stay within the parasagittal plane one should avoid directing the needle to medial to avoid causing a pneumothorax. Also, do not direct the needle to lateral. More lateral injection points result in less complete nerve blocks. The infraclavicular block can be complete after even a single injection onto any cord. The best single injection success, however, is achieved by injecting onto the posterior cord confirmed by nerve stimulation. The posterior cord is the largest of the three cords and is positioned perfectly midway between the other two cords. We recommend always targeting the posterior cord first, if possible. An injection made visually guided only at the 9 o'clock paravascular position of the subclavian artery will be highly successful. We however recommend verifying precise needle placement using a nerve stimulator as well. The very fastest infraclavicular block onset is achieved with a three chord injection at the 6 o'clock, 9 o'clock and 11 o'clock positions about the artery. This will give a donut shaped drug spread around the artery. The clavicle runs like this and it's concave facing anterior on the lateral side. This here is the acromion. The ball of the humerus sits like this and the coracoid process is going to sit just there. And we do the intraclavicular block in this little axis. We call this little cavity the coracoclavicular trough and it's critical to keep the transducer uh, parallel to this line and the needle will insert from here, very close to bone, and approximately the direction that I'm indicating. This transducer is sitting in a natural trough. I can't push it much to lateral or to medial. Uh, it's being bounded here by the chromion. It's being bounded this side by the clavicle. Coming to medial, it's pushing against the rib cage. 
This is, this is the key anatomy. We see dermis here. This is the cephalic end. The clavicle is just off picture over here. Uh, this deep darkness here is the subscapular muscle. The ribs we can't see in picture at all, yeah? They're not involved. Over here will be the subclavian vein, but our main structure we're looking at is the subclavian artery. The sides are fuzzy, and there's an artifact deep to it. This is pectoralis major, pectoralis minor. Our needle's going to descend from up here at about 45 degrees towards here. The brachial plexus is spread around quite close to the artery, and I'm going to get my needle to this area called 9 o'clock. Somewhere between here and about here, I will find the posterior cord. I expect to find medial cord here at 6 o'clock. If I don't get a twitch, I inject drug regardless. And then the last injection is up here at 11 o'clock, where I'll be looking for a twitch corresponding with lateral mosquito bites. And I'm going to use an echogenic needle here. It's quite a blunt needle, so it's quite tough to get through flesh. So now I'm going to establish the image that I want. I always want the artery touching edge of screen. Sometimes I have to lean the transducer looking slightly mean. The transducer with your fingertips is very tiring. So I'm trying to hold it here at the base of my thumb. Uh, that'll give me a little bit more endurance. Should be able to hold a very stable image. Now let's find the needle in image and look now I rock the needle, it helps me see the needle. If, the, if they're a little bit steeper, and I'm pushing in here to 9 o'clock, we're going through lateral cord. I'm looking for posterior cord. It's deltoid, okay. You want to switch off nerve stimulator? So where the tip of that needle is now, I'm touching the posterior cord. We had a deltoid twitch. And I'm going to now advance the needle to 6 o'clock, just under the artery. You can switch on stimulator. If our volunteer is typical, uh, he may get a ulnar twitch. See the hand supinate, indicating medial cord stimulation. See the brachioradialis muscle twitch, indicating posterior cord stimulation. Okay, he's posterior cord all the way. Um, that's fine. I would at this point inject five milliliters. Five milliliters. I'm now going to come back and find the lateral cord. You can see the needle. So I'm aiming for 11 o'clock from the artery, and there's my biceps twitch. And you can inject dextrose water on this. To remind you, make the first injection of 20 milliliters onto the posterior cord. Then inject 5 milliliters at the 6 o'clock position for the medial cord. Then lastly, inject 15 milliliters onto the lateral cord at the 11 o'clock position.